Welcome to the Your Next Move podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, Jennifer Dent Brown. Y'all, this conversation, don't be surprised if it feels like I may be getting coached because Jennifer is probably (laughs) one of the people I need to hire in my life. She is the founder of Stop dieting forever. And she's helped hundreds of women quit temporary weight loss fads and embrace a mindset that creates permanent weight loss and management. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you know, I've talked about my struggles, my journey with weight. And I think body weight and image, it impacts us so much. And I love that Jennifer really works with high achieving professionals where it's a thing to squeeze these things into our life. And we met years ago. Mm -hmm. I think I was trying to calculate I want. I came up with like 2017. Yeah, I think it was around 2017, 2016. Exactly. Era. 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 <laughs> exactly. I was like, I don't remember exactly when, but mm-hmm. I was living a lower down in Jersey, and we were in a coaching program together, mm-hmm. and we ended up staying in touch. As you know, most of my guests, like we meet in these random periods, and had just always kept in contact. Yeah. And thanks I, to social media. Yes, thanks to social media, 100. <laughs> so before we get started, I want you to introduce yourself, tell the people who you are, yeah. and give your receipts. We need to know. Okay. So let's. As you said, I'm Jennifer Dent Brown. Um, I am a life and weight loss coach. Mm. And I became a life and weight loss coach because I had my own issues with my weight. So when you met me, I kind of figured everything out and yes. I was already a coach. But before that, um, I didn't have a weight issue until I went to college. Mm. And it was Hampton undergrad, Hampton under, undergrad, but it was freshman 15. Okay. And then it was like, continuously gaining sophomore and junior all the way through. And then I went to graduate school, same thing. So I continued Mm. to progressively gain weight all the way through school. But I was very like hell bent on trying to lose a weight. So I tried all the diets. Yep. I remember going to Weight Watchers for the first time when I was mm-hmm. in college. So I'd always lose, like I did enough to lose like seven or eight pounds. And then I'm like, okay, I lost some weight. And I would go right back and start eating whatever all the hell things. I was eating before. So when I finished graduate school, I got a job as a management consultant. Mm -hmm. I was on the road 90% of the time, living out of a hotel, Mm -hmm. expense account, all the meals, working really late hours. And so my weight just ballooned. Really? Um, And so I was like super frustrated. And I was I did all the uh, diet centers. I was I remember being at, like at a client site, and I had the Jenny Craig uh, powdered soup. Oh my! <laughs> Not powdered soup. <laughs> I had soup. to put it like in the styrofoam oh. bowl at my desk and stir it up with the hot water. Like I did all of that stuff, all the restriction, yeah. trying to lose weight, and it just didn't work. It just did not work. And so finally, I remember I was on vacation. Mm -hmm. And you know, on vacation, you eat all the things. And and drink all the things. Yeah, Drink all the things. It was like getting ready to go home. And I was like on the internet looking. I was like, okay, what's my next diet going to be? And so I remember finding this woman's site. And she said she was a health coach. Okay. I was like, what is that? And on her site, it said, if you've tried everything, you haven't tried this. I was like, oh, honey, yes. I have tried everything. So let me see what you got. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I remember I like plunked down 1400 bucks for her okay. course. It was like a six week course. And that's when I learned about mind body connection. Mm. Her approach wasn't about restriction. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is fascinating. It was about lifestyle change. Mm. And so I was like, I need to know more. And because I'm forever a student, I was like, what school did you go to? How did you learn this? And so... I ended up enrolling in the same school that she went to, which was the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. Yes. Learned so much about holistic health, nutrition, the mind-body connection, all the things. And then I started coaching. Well, no, I started losing weight. Okay. And then people were like, well, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I, I, I'm a coach. <laughs> I can help you do this too. I can help you too. <laughs> because at the time I was still a management consultant. That yeah. was my identity. Got it. But I was like, I can help you lose some weight. And so I started coaching on the side and here we are. Fast forward. Wow. To today. And I love talking to people when they have weight loss journeys that understand the struggles of losing weight, being in a busy job, like doing Mm -hmm. all the things. I think sometimes with weight loss stories, for me at least, I find it unrelatable. If someone's got all the hours in the day, 
all the resources in the world. Mm -hmm. I feel like I am so busy, so overwhelmed, all these priorities sometimes. Like, am I going to go to the gym two times a day? Am I going to put the sweatsuit on and be jogging on the treadmill looking crazy and have to run into a meeting and I got to get my hair? Like, mm, I think all, all hair, those things. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like, all of those things. Mm -hmm. So I think listening to your experience yeah. and listening to your personal experience and like the experience of the success stories of so many of your clients, I think it's, for me, it's very, very inspiring. Mm -hmm. And on your website, you have a three-step process, mm -hmm. which I think I relate to being like coming from the corporate world. It's like, okay, what is the process? What are we going to do? So what is the three-step process? That, that's a consultant in me. Yes. I was like, how can we break it down and make it simple? <laughs> what is the method? Right. So what is it? So it's learn, lose, live. Okay. That's simply it. Like I help women get off of the weight loss struggle bus. Okay. And the struggle bus is when you have all of those objections that you're dealing with. Like I want to lose weight, mm -hmm. but my hair, the time at the gym, I don't know what to wear. I mm -hmm. don't know what to eat. So those are all objections. I was like, how can we make weight loss simple? And unlike what you will find in the diet industry or with traditional diets. Got it. So learn, lose, live. You join my program. Mm -hmm. We can talk about that. Clearly, I'm going to be joining later, y'all. <laughs> we'll put a link so y'all can join with me. You become a Lux Lifer. And I take you through the first process, which is learn. Okay. And you learn my process, which is basically I'm taking you through the mindset of weight loss. Not like the actions of weight loss, because you know how to do that. You know how to be in the gym for two count hours if you wanted to. Yeah. You know how to count calories. There's an app for all of that stuff. My people don't know how to think like somebody who doesn't have a weight problem. So I take hmm. you through that process first. Okay. And then you go to lose, which is phase two. And you're basically just implementing what I've taught you in the first okay. in the first phase. And we work on our weight loss goals in 90 days at a time, 90 day sprints. Okay. And you just keep rinsing and repeating until you get to your goal. And then when you reach your forever weight, then you move into live, which is where I help my clients now hmm. move out of like weight loss mindset into, oh, this is actually my life. Like this is my life now. Like I'm living at my goal weight. I don't have to like keep doing now. There's a difference between active weight loss mindset and someone who is just living and maintaining their weight. So, and then we coach on all the other things that happen in life. So I know one of the biggest things is someone who's listening who wants to lose weight. I think when we think about 90 day sprints, I know one of my questions is always like, well, what's reasonable? What's reasonable? <laughs> Everybody wants to know how long is this going to take? Yeah. Like what's reasonable? Like, what do you see? Like as someone who really commits to your process and that middle depends, phase. Right. So that's the thing. So mm -hmm. that's what the diet industry has sold us. Like we can all lose weight at the same time at the same pace, yeah. which is not true. I take, yeah, everybody's a little bit different. Everybody's different. So I teach a concept called bioindividuality. I don't. Oh, yes. Okay. Everybody is individually different. So this is why cookie cutter diets don't work for everyone. Okay. This is why Beyonce can lose weight on a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. I gain weight on a plant-based diet. Really? Okay. Yes. Or someone else can do keto and you over here, you may try keto and you may blow up or you may Got feel it. like have a lot of digestive issues. So with bio-individuality, I help my clients determine what is the best weight loss route for them. If you mm. ask any of my clients, and first of all, the funny thing is they're all like, Jennifer does, has no idea what I eat because I don't tell you what to eat. You determine what that is, but I give you kind of like a structure of how to understand what are the best foods for you, how much, when to eat, when to stop really? eating. And all. That's the thinking part of it. So, so much of it is a mindset, which is my question. Because I know for mm -hmm. me, it's like, no, I want to lose the weight now. Yeah. I want it to be gone. When I think about where my weight is at my, like, fit and fine, mm -hmm. fit and fine and ungrateful. Because I was not <laughs> grateful for having, like, <laughs> top abs at that point. Like, I still need to do more. Fit and fine, that's probably 40 pounds from where I am now. And I've slowly lost about maybe... 20 to 30 over the past like Good. two years. Good. However, pause comma. I want to be fit and fine again. <laughs> I want to be fit and fine yesterday. Like, faster, 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 exactly. faster. Mm -hmm. But you talk so much about mindset. So mm -hmm. what is the importance? Like why is the mindset like the biggest issue that we have to overcome? Because I would think that like, no, like me wanting to be skinny, this should be, that's the mindset that I need. Mm -hmm. But it sounds so much deeper when it you talk about deeper. it. It is deeper. It is deeper. And I, it, this is why my weight loss process is so effective because no other diet teaches you how to think. Mm. So the first thing I would offer you, and I know a lot of my clients come to me because they're like, I need to be skinnier, like 
now. Yeah. So when we approach weight loss from a place of I don't like where I am right now, it's difficult. It's so hard. Everything I've just said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's hard. <laughs> right. And so one of the things that I teach in the first process is like learning to love where you are right now. And yeah, you don't even have to love it. You just have to like it a little bit. Got it. Okay. I like <laughs> a little, I can tolerate that. I can do like it a little bit. Yeah. And that's a mindset shift, okay. right? Because if someone is just used to looking in the mirror every day, like, oh my God, I hate my thighs or, you know, I don't like my, my chin or something like that. Then you're trying to like create another body from a place of dislike. Mm. And we want to learn just to love ourselves no matter where we are. It just makes a weight loss journey so much easier. Self-acceptance. Yes. Self-acceptance. Just a little bit. It's just, funny, just we, had, we had another guest this season, Ariel Belgrave, and she's in the health space as well. And she mm-hmm. talked a lot about self-care versus self-soothe. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. what we need to do to actually care for ourselves to make ourselves feel better, to set ourselves up versus the things that we do to soothe. So we soothe ourselves every single day Mm -hmm. by having a glass of wine or- That's the numbing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or we're going to the spots. We're just soothing all the things. But what is the care routine that we need every single day? So what I hear you saying is that, yes, you may want to lose the weight like yesterday, but it's like you need to appreciate where you are, Mm -hmm. who you are at this time. Mm -hmm. And I think appreciate that you're in progress Yeah. versus being looking at yourself as essentially being incomplete. 100%. Yes. Um, you got it, sis. You got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, the mindset is starting to shift just a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. So we get this self-care, self-soothe, mm-hmm. mindset piece. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about like the logistics, just a little bit more, because I think as we're talking to high achieving, busy professionals, one of the hardest parts I found is like when you're really killing yourself, doing all these diets, restrictive eating, for many of us you can't be depleted during the day to function. Mm -hmm. I can't be in a meeting and my stomach is growling. Mm -hmm. I can't be eating in such a calorie deficit that I can't think properly for the work that we're doing every single day. What do you feel like is the biggest challenge for professionals, these high achieving, high powered execs who are like, I need to also lose weight. What is our biggest challenge? You believe you need to deprive yourself to lose weight. Okay. If you listen to my client testimonials, they're all like, oh my God, I started eating and I lost weight. (laughs) I was like, I had more and I lost weight. Yeah. So your belief is like, I need to be hungry. I need to have my stomach growling. I need to feel like I haven't eaten enough food in order for me to lose weight. It's miserable. Nobody wants to exist Hmm. like that. Hmm. Right? So that's what the diet industry will tell you like. We just need to cut our calories, exercise more, and then we'll lose weight. But with bioindividuality, what you'll find is like everybody's metabolism is different. Everybody's life circumstances are different. Everybody's energy needs are different. And we get that from food. But if you don't know your energy needs from Monday to a Saturday, you're just eating just because somebody told you this is what you're supposed to eat. And that's actually not fueling your body. It's doing the opposite. It's slowing you down. I do think like, that it's all about, when you think about diets, and I've, I think I've done I've done them all. I didn't do the powdered soup, though, because I think when, I, when it comes <laughs> that's to- That's when you stop. That's when I had to stop. I'm not good with the prepackaged meals. That's one of the few things. When yeah. it smells prepackaged, mm-hmm. I've never been able to do it. Like, it just, my stomach is like, mm, that's not for you. That's good. So those are the only ones I haven't been able to do, but I've done pretty much everything else. I think it's all about what are you taking out, mm-hmm. never really what are you putting in. So the mindset of like eating- the bio individuality, mm-hmm. not taking out, mm-hmm. is that you can have more and be mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm just like, hmm. Mm-hmm. Call, I call it crowding out. What do you call it? Crowding out. Crowding out. Yeah. So the first thing, one of the things that I teach is that no foods are off limits. Because uh-huh. as soon as you tell your brain of like, I can't have this, I can't have that, what happens? That's all you want. Yeah. I want my popcorn and cheeses and a glass of Riesling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're like, oh my God, I can't have wine for the next six months, but I got I to gotta get this weight off of me. That's like a ridiculous way to live and it's not sustainable. So as soon as my clients remove the label and they give themselves permission to eat the foods that they want, they find that they just don't even want them as much. Hmm. <laughs> so I think this brings us, so you're saying that we don't need deprivation. Mm -hmm. I think the other piece we talked about, when we speak about healthy living, there's so much about willpower. Yeah. 
that we talk so much about, but you feel very differently about that. Mm -hmm. So it's not deprivation. It's not willpower. What do we need instead of willpower? You need to change your mindset. It's simply like willpower is fleeting. We can do anything for a week. We can do anything Mm -hmm. for two weeks. We can do anything for, I got this vacation. I got this event. I'm going to like suck it up and not eat anything so I can lose weight for the event. But as soon as the event is over, willpower is gone. And then you end up eating all of the things that you deprived yourself of while you were trying to lose the weight. Mm -hmm. And then you're right back where you started again. And then the thought is like, okay, I just need to get myself back to willpower. I just need to get myself back to that place. And that's actually not changing anything. So instead of willpower, we need to learn how to change our thinking because I teach you to begin to think like someone who doesn't struggle with their weight. If you think about the person who doesn't struggle with their weight, they go out to eat. They're not like having this argument in their head of like, what should I order? Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? They just enjoy their food. When you think about somebody who doesn't struggle with their weight, you look over and they like have some food left on their plate. You're like, how did that happen? When you think about someone who doesn't struggle with their weight, they just drink the water. Like it's not like, oh my God, I got to like drink eight ounces of water every two minutes. Like there are no rules. It's just what they do. It's their self-concept. So I'm Hmm. teaching my clients to create that self-concept first through what I I call an identity statement. And then you're just working to become that person as you're losing the weight. I love that. I feel like a lot of the interviews we're doing this season, we come back to this concept of doing what's in your own best self-interest. Yeah. And you know what that is. Yes. And I feel like it's, it's so hard sometimes. It shouldn't be so hard. But it feels hard sometimes to do things in your own best self interest. Mm -hmm. And I think when I'm thinking about myself and I'm thinking about my own health journey, I've said all the things that you said. Like, okay, yeah, I think I said it. I think I said it to my producer like 20 minutes ago. (laughs) Probably I was like, you know, after the season of the podcast, I need to get back on it. I need to just make myself be disciplined. One of my friends sent me a new trainer last night. I've got another guest who's been on the podcast. Like, girl, we're going to do the plan. Mm -hmm. We'll just knock it out. Understand, like, oh, I may be miserable for the next few months, yeah. but you're well, saying why? the opposite of like, yeah. no, none of that is actually necessary. Yeah, You're doing things that are supporting the highest version of yourself. Correct. By so. thinking like that person first, mm-hmm. right? Anybody can do a plan, but can you do the plan forever if your mindset hasn't changed? If, you're, if you haven't become the person that just works out all the time, if you haven't become the person that just loves to eat vegetables, like, no. It's not sustainable. This is yeah. why we, we find ourselves on the weight loss struggle bus because we lose the weight because we are disciplined for a period of time. Yes, indeed. And then we get off and then we're like, oh my God, we start eating all the things and then we gain the weight back. And then we're like, I got to find the discipline again. And then you talk to somebody it's like, girl, you need to do this plan or you need to do this diet or you need to like get this B12 shot or do this thing. Yeah, do the liquid IV, do and this, do this, all, all the, the things. things yes. right? Or buy this supplement or buy these fat burners pills. I did it all. I, oh, yes. I've done I've it all. I've done them all. And what I found is that I would always gain the weight back. And so, or you just don't feel good. Or you don't feel like good. Like when you mentioned those pills, yeah. I remember one time, me and one of my best friends, there was someone like on the earlier days of Instagram. This was like 2011, maybe. We found, I won't name it because I think we actually Googled her and found the person the other day. Mm-hmm. They had these pills that came to your house and it was like all black packaging, <laughs> like neon <laughs> green writing. Mm-hmm. Basically said, this is not safe to ingest, but you could be skinny. And we're like, oh, oh you could be skinny, That's so we're going to do it. Right? So, I was in the <laughs> office and my heart was beating out my chest. Oh, yeah. But I was like, yeah. I could do this because of, I think we were also mm-hmm. juicing at that time too. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even understand the mix of like citrus and it made me feel terrible. So many things that we've all done. Mm-hmm. In the name of weight loss. In the name of weight loss. Mm-hmm. And the crazy thing I feel like is that this is so common, especially for women. Yeah. That we're doing all these great things, but not fueling ourselves in our in this way. When people say health is wealth, when they say that, it's just so important to care for yourself. But mm-hmm. it seems like it's so difficult. Because mm-hmm. we don't give ourselves permission to do that. So in my membership, like the there is a very strong there's a very strong focus on coaching, right? I coach three times a week mm-hmm. with my people because it is difficult. Because we have been socialized to mm-hmm. believe that, you know, we have to like lose weight quick. We have to be super skinny. We have to like fill these like 
stories that the patriarchy has set up for us of like, mm-hmm. this is who we're supposed to be in the world. Says who? And so I just helped to dismantle all of that thinking when, you know, people bring their, their struggles to coaching. I love that. Yeah. So what would you say is the most surprising transformation that happens for the women who exit your program? Well, they would say, I already know what's going to happen. I can see the writing on the wall. <laughs> okay. But they would say the fact that what they learn, like the tools and the strategies I teach them for weight loss, they can now apply to every aspect of their lives. Interesting. Yes. I have a lot of like doctors, professional women, coaches, entrepreneurs that come to me. I have one grandmother who's just given her life to her children and her spouse And they've learned like what you learn about like controlling your urges when it comes to eating, the why you're eating, why you're why you're using food and alcohol to numb yourself. All of that is like mind management. All of that is understanding your emotions. I I teach called what I call emotional literacy. So I'm teaching my clients how to become more emotionally literate. You understand how you're feeling when you understand why you're using food to change your emotions you can apply that to anything. When you're in a meeting and your manager like pisses you off, you know how to control your emotions or manage your emotions based off of the facts, not based off of, well, he looked at me wrong or she said something to me, like none of that, right? You learn how to change and manage your emotions based off of the facts, which is The facts of weight loss, right? Looking at what you're eating, what you're not eating, your weight, all of those things. It all just kind of like comes together. feels like you're giving so much mental clarity. Mm -hmm. There's a model. Have you heard of the gym? I'm going to mess. I'm going to jack it up. So (laughs) we will connect with a resource that has it right if you don't know it. Uh You know, I think it was Jim Rohn who talked about like the have, do, be, or be, do, have model. Uh Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it talks about, we think that if we have the things that we want to have, then we'll do the things that we're supposed to do. And Mm -hmm. then we'll be that person. It's the opposite. But it's, yeah, it's the opposite is Mm -hmm. that we need to be the person who we want to be, Mm -hmm. do those things in support of that person. And then we'll have what we want. Want. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I, I got that right. I'm proud. Like, mm-hmm. I, like I was mulling over my mind. And I feel like that's essentially what you're teaching. I think in so many goals that we have in our life, it's really operating at that B level. It's mm-hmm. like, who do we want to be? Like, determining who that person is and how do we do things in the interest of that person, that mm-hmm. future self, even if you don't feel like that person right now, Correct. which I think is the hardest part in life and yeah. business and partnership and work. Mm-hmm. It's like people who are entry level analysts and they see themselves being like a global director one day. It's like, how do you operate as a director today, mm-hmm. even though you're an analyst? How do you operate as this? healthy, wealthy version of yourself who's confident when in the reality you may feel overweight, tired, mm-hmm. underappreciated, undervalued, and just un, just yeah. any un adjective. That's when coaching comes in handy, right? Because I'm helping people bridge the gap of like, oh, I have this vision of who I want to become, but like I'm really sitting in this reality. So it's hard to me to be that person or think like that person all mm-hmm. the time. So that's where the emotional management comes in. Because when you're feeling depressed or sad or Mm -hmm. self-doubting yourself, like you need to learn how to manage those emotions, right? You need to learn how to understand like this is normal and it's okay, right? Show a little bit of self-compassion. We don't learn self-compassion in school. Like nobody taught us, especially not in the workplace. We didn't learn any of that stuff. So when you're able to use the strategies that I teach to to foster that self-compassion, that it's like, okay, I can like move one step forward to that person who I want to become today. And that's it. And it's being kinder to ourselves. Being so much kinder. We're so hard on ourselves. I did a podcast on negativity bias and it's just shocking how easy it is to just go down that rabbit hole. Like Mm -hmm. worst case scenario, it's just so easy. But when you recognize what is happening, Mm -hmm. it's almost like you're standing outside of your own brain. Like, oh, there's that brain again. Like, look what she's doing. Like, she's Mm -hmm. telling me I can't do it. Yeah. It's like, okay, let's bring yourself back out. It's normal. It's all right. But we can still keep moving. I don't have to eat the bag of chips right now. I can do something else. I don't have to have a glass of Riesling right now. It's okay. Like, I can soothe myself. It's all right. I love in this, I feel like in our generation with like millennials and Gen Xers, I think there's this true push to truly care for ourselves better Mm -hmm. than we've seen our parents do. Yeah. And 
I think that sometimes we know intuitively, I think I said earlier, we know intuitively that we need to be nicer, that we need to care for ourselves. We need to soothe ourselves and set ourselves up for success. But it's almost like a guilt complex of like, am I being selfish by setting myself up this way? Mm. Am I taking time away from my, my spouse, my children, my job to drink the water that I need to drink in between meetings. I can remember when I was in corporate America and I'd look at my schedule and I'd be like, I don't think I have time to pee. <laughs> <laughs> like, and looking like back in the days when you're like when you were in the office and it's like okay like back I have a to, meeting on this floor meetings. on this floor on this floor and I'm mm-hmm. going from here to here mm-hmm. I know this leader's gonna run over and I'm gonna be late for this one who's a jerk so I gotta make sure I book it mm-hmm. I'm like do I have time to pee mm-hmm. and just like scheduling yourself so crazy where you don't even give yourself the time to go to the bathroom yeah so it's just giving yourself permission to take care of yourself yeah and if that is like, okay, I need to like 15 minutes in between my meetings. I'm just going to have to get up and leave this one early mm-hmm. and like go to the bathroom. That is giving yourself permission to take care of yourself, period. That's it. And yeah. we just are not taught how to do that. It's insane. That like, it seems like it's such a simple, simple thing to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. But I think we realize from our own traumas, our own things that are going on in our lives. I know this season, I knew we opened the season talking about my year, of my 2022. 2022 was not a, it was a hardest year for myself. Mm-hmm. But on the other side, and now we're it's October 2022, like coming to the close, I'm so much more happy, yeah. more joyful. And a lot of that was learning to care for myself in some aspects. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of this year has been me caring and like taking care of my health yep. and getting myself back to a point. But now there's there's so much more. It's like recovering from surgery is one thing. That's like, you got to do that. But now it's like, okay, now how can I cre- increase my own longevity, increase my own energy, feel happier, feel lighter, feel brighter. Mm-hmm. Like I did some things like we're recording in my home mm-hmm. and I put so much energy this year into creating a space that I'm happy to go into. It's beautiful. But I appreciate it. Even though right now outside of what y'all see on camera, it's a mess. <laughs> but this right here looks great. Normally I'm very, like it's very put together at all times. And I love that. I feel so mm-hmm. joyful. But the thing I'm thinking about, what I was so happy to talk about you today, talk to you today is because I'm like, I feel joyful in the home. Yeah. I have peace at home. I walk in the door every day and I'm like, Ooh, like yeah. I am here. It feels good, but I need to now feel good in my body. So let me just tell you that you created this vision for yourself. Yes. Like you created this space. You had the vision. You were like, I want to find a space. I want to be able to feel joyful. I wanted, and you did all of the things because you had the vision and then you created it. You don't tell me to apply vision. it to this too. <laughs> That's so smart. For me. I felt it. I was like, wait, wait, wait. So you already know how to do it though. Yeah. Right? You already know how to do it. You were so like that vision for you was so clear of what you wanted your home to feel like. Now it's like, okay, when I think about my body, how do I want to feel? Especially when it comes to longevity, like I'm 48. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about longevity. I'm like over the vanity numbers of like wanting to be in a size four all the time. Yeah. I'm thinking about being healthy in my body. I'm feeling like being, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm creating. I need that. My brain needs to be focused. I don't have time to be dealing with hangovers and brain fog and all that stuff anymore. (laughs) So I am intentionally doing things that give my body energy, sleep. Mm -hmm. meditation, prayer, feeding it the right foods, connecting with my friends, my people in real life, like not (laughs) not on Zoom. Not on Zoom, not on Instagram. Doing those things that feel good to me, which is part of just like an integrated, healthy lifestyle. Mm. So you already know how to create a vision. You're a visionary, right? Mm -hmm. All of this is, we're here because of this vision you have. So you know how to create a vision and you know how to fulfill it. This is just one other thing that you can create for your own, your health. <sighs> Y'all heard it here on the podcast. <laughs> I feel like this is like leading me to like make a commitment. Like I should make a commitment to doing this. Well, why wouldn't you want to make a commitment? I feel like I'm on your podcast now. <laughs> I think that one of my fears, and I think as someone, when we talk about weight loss, I think one of the fears is that like when you've joined all these plans, Mm -hmm. when you've hired all of these trainers, I personally don't want to let myself down again by not achieving the goal, not achieving the thing, Mm -hmm. not showing up in the way that I know I should show up. 
Mm -hmm. So by not committing, I'm not putting myself on the hook to disappoint myself. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I feel like I should make a commitment. But I'm just like, oh, and if I do it on camera, like, (laughs) (laughs) to be continued. But I love that you brought that up because I think so many women have that same thought of like, Mm -hmm. I've done so many things. Yes. And you know the level of effort it took to get to that point. But mm-hmm. when you look back, you're like, well, damn, did it work? And I've only done it the hard way, I think. Mm-hmm. So if you knew me back in 2014, like so before we met, mm-hmm. um, at that time, I think I've probably shared briefly that I wanted to train for a bodybuilding competition. Mm-hmm. And I beat my body mm-hmm. twice a day, every day. I was running sprints uphill on a treadmill. There was nothing I couldn't chase down, pick up, lift up, like... I was eating so radically clean. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't even eat anything. That was super crazy because my stomach was immediately like, girl, Mm -hmm. you've been eating like baked everything. Like now all of a sudden you're going to give me a French fry. Basically, you want chicken and waffles (laughs) for what? Like one cocktail at best. Like it really trained my body. But then I had a problem breaking my body fat when I got to a certain level Mm -hmm. and I'd been sore for too long and was so tired of sitting on the toilet and like wincing. Because I was just so squat. Basically, I was like, like this, this hurts. So I was yeah. like, and then I slowly but surely gained the weight back. When I was like, okay, I'm gonna mm-hmm. back up. I'm tired of two a days. I'm tired of like being sore. But notice how you said it really trained your body. Yeah, there was nothing going on up here. Oh no, it was it was strictly it was just, let me willpower. follow the plan. Yep, and try to create this result. If anything, I took my mindset out of it. I think I was going through totally. a big life change, mm-hmm. and I used the gym as a way to like numb out things. Like mm-hmm. it, when you are on the step mill, mm-hmm. that stair mill thing, mm-hmm. and you have some trap music in your ears. Yeah. No. Like, I mean, yeah, I, I can understand, yeah, but like, yeah, that's not me. Yeah. So I'm like, well, from, that's what I did during that time period. Mm-hmm. I was like, I couldn't think about anything else. Like yeah. just keep going for, I would do hot yoga. I would do very intense, like spin classes, like things that would allow me to not think. So I can remove my brain from it yeah. and just use like discipline and willpower just to do it. Yeah. So you were buffering with working yeah. out, right? Yeah. We buffer with work. We buffer yeah. with food. We buffer her with social media, all the th- all the emotions we don't want to feel. Yeah, We're like let me just throw myself into something else and distract myself from feeling those emotions. Yeah, and so if I had been coaching you at that time, yeah. I would have been like, "Well, what are you running from? What are you yeah. not wanting to to feel?" And I would teach you that feeling that negative emotion is really not as difficult as we think. Like it's harder and takes more energy to run away from the negative emotion mm. than it is actually to sit and feel it. And just grow through it. And just go through it. And then on, mm-hmm. when you get to the other side, it is like joy. It's like, oh, dang, I feel good now. Like I made it to the other side. I didn't die. I didn't have to like eat yeah. the bag of chips or drink half a bottle of wine just to like numb out the feeling. It's actually going through and it's doing that deeper through. work. And it's not, it's not even deep. That's the thing, y'all. It's not even deep. It's we not think even it's, deep. No, we think it's like this deep, scary thing of like feeling our emotions. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, oh no, tears. No, all you really need nine. to do is like, no, it's like identify what the emotion is. I teach this concept called acknowledge and accept all of the emotions. Got it. Okay. So when you can acknowledge the emotion, right, that's where the emotional literacy comes in because you got to know, you got to put a name on it, got to be able to name it and claim it. Then it's like, oh, you almost in- immediately de-intensify the emotion because it's like, oh, I'm just feeling sad right now, right? And then hmm. you just accept the fact that you're feeling sad. It's perfectly normal to feel sad and it's okay. And then you can keep going. But when you're like trying to avoid feeling sad, you're trying to avoid like mm-hmm. crying just a little bit, you're trying to like avoid it, it's, it takes more energy to like uh, try to avoid being sad than it does actually sit down and like, I'm sad for a minute. I That's like, a little tear. Like, oh. A little, a little bit. I, feel like I, got, I got so many things I got to talk about in my next therapy session. <laughs> so many things. <laughs> oh, I've recorded these past three days. So many things. I think I'm someone who there's some areas of my life, like we were talking about communication with my team the other day. I'm very big on, let me say the thing. Mm-hmm. Like if we had a conflict, I'd rather just tell you, have the conversation, get it over with. Cause the anxiety mm. of having the conversation with you about something I didn't like is worse to me than just doing it. Like I don't believe in ghosting. I think it takes so much more energy to ghost someone yeah. than it does just like, Hey, like I didn't like that. Or you know what? I'm just not that interested. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is. I'd rather say that. So then it's done. Mm-hmm. But on the other side, when it comes to emotions, my podcast producer is always trying to get me to share, to talk Be about vulnerable. my life. <laughs> exactly. And, and her podcast is so vulnerable, mm. so open, so honest. And 
I'm working on sharing from Good. that standpoint. And it, there's so many, what, what I realize, I think in every guest that I speak to with every challenge that we have in our lives, I think that everything is so interconnected. I think what you said about like, okay, your process, like you learn how to mm-hmm. do this in one area, mm-hmm. it's going to help everything. Mm-hmm. And it's applying it versus compartmentalizing yeah. all the different facets of our life at all times. Mm-hmm. It's how do we bring this together so we can holistically be our best selves. Mm-hmm. Have you ever done the Wheel of Life exercise? Mm-hmm. Totally, all the time. Yeah, so the Wheel of Life. So if you don't mm-hmm. know the Wheel of Life exercise, essentially imagine a wheel and there's, I guess, the spokes on the wheel, right? And each spoke is an area of your life. So you have health, you have finances, relationships, Spirituality. work, career, sp- whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. And you rate all the areas of your life, something else. So, you know, maybe you have a five in finances, a 10 in career, a a four with your partner, whatever it is. And if that were a wheel, it would be real bumpy, Mm -hmm. (laughs) real bumpy when you're going along. But the goal is that if you work on the weakest areas, that everything else will start to even out Mm -hmm. so that your ride can be a lot smoother. And I feel like that's the concept that you're talking a lot about today. Mm -hmm. It's how can we have a much smoother ride by dealing with what we know to be true. Yeah. So we can feel better. Yeah. And, then, and, and literally, literally what I do is like, we just work on the health, right? The health, we, mm-hmm. the health spoke yeah. of the wheel. And then what my clients see is like, oh, I, what I'm learning here, like how I'm like learning how to manage my urges around eating and all the things and learn how to manage my mindset. I can apply this to work. Oh, I can apply this in conversations with my spouse. I can, I can teach my kids this. Yeah. It's so beautiful when I hear my clients are like teaching their kids what I'm teaching them. It's like, oh, it's like the trickle down effect. I love it. Mm-hmm. So as we come to a close today, this conversation has been so amazing. You're like, I'm out of the hot seat now, please. <laughs> this is so hot. It felt hot. I feel like I just, I love bringing guests on who like, you know, your stuff, mm-hmm. like inside out, forwards, backwards. It's my life. And that's so key. I think especially when, if we kind of pivot and talk about like even hiring people to support you in your life. I did another episode talking about who's in your circle, Mm -hmm. right? I think when we're thinking about bringing someone into our lives to help us with an issue, it's so key that you bring in people who know their stuff and not just know it on a gram, (laughs) okay? (laughs) Not just know it on TikTok. (laughs) Like there's a very big difference between being able to do like a 30 second clip of knowing your information and living it, experiencing it. And being able to help other people. Helping other other people and yeah. helping different types of people. Like you've even talked about your clients being you said you, you have doctors, you, got, you have doctors, mm-hmm. you have lawyers, you have all these different people, mm-hmm. corporate folks consulting and seeing how things apply, I think is so key mm-hmm. to know that like it works. Yeah. Like it really, really works. Yeah. 100%. So, I know like we're obviously we're going to have links. So if anyone wants to join, stop dieting forever. Like yes. we're going to talk about that. But so outside of that, which you, you probably going to see my behind in. <laughs> I'll be going to come join with Kimberly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kimberly. And we want to have you back in my new sweat, mm-hmm. a sweat body when I get it all together. But what do you think is the number one thing that you recommend professionals start doing today to make better life and health choices to support the life they want to live? Yeah. It's really just making, learning how to make decisions because Mm -hmm. weight loss literally is just making a lot of different decisions throughout the day. The reason why we're overweight, many of us, is because we're just on autopilot. Like we just are habitual, like Friday night, oh, glass of wine or Sunday night. Oh, I'm going out to dinner with my friends. Like we just do Mm -hmm. the same things over and over again. So if you want a different result, you got to start thinking differently. So if your normal habit is I come home after work and I have two glasses of wine, all right, maybe now I'm going to have like one glass of wine and see how I feel. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like you want to have another one, then go have the other one, right? But just like pausing with the, uh, being intentional and pausing like the auto play of Mm -hmm. what you're doing of your, of your quote unquote bad habits may change what you're actually doing. And so that may result in some weight loss. Maybe. I love that. So it's really just questioning what you're doing and why. Because so many times we just don't question it. We just do it. It's we like just autopilot. do it. Mm-hmm. We just do it. Like who said you're supposed to drink 64 ounces of water a day? Okay, that's a lovely rule. But why? How do you feel drinking, I don't know, 50 ounces of water? <laughs> <laughs> what right? works for you? What, what works for you and when, right? Because what works on Monday may not work as well on a Saturday. Like you just have to 
figure that out. Hmm. So with that, this is the Your Next Move podcast. Mm-hmm. So I always like to know what people are working on. What is your next move? I'm just working on bringing more women off of the weight loss struggle bus into my world. Mm. Right. I mean, I have a podcast called Stop Dieting Forever. Mm -hmm. I have people messaging me talking about the weight loss that they have lost just by listening to the podcast, just by implementing some of the things that I talk about on the podcast. So my mission is to reach thousands of women to bring them into the sphere, because once they learn this process, they can contribute more of their gifts and their talents to their families, to their church families, to their jobs. Like they're being, they're showing up in the world in such a bigger way and contributing in such a bigger way. Once we check weight loss done off of the to-do list, not a problem anymore. I'm hoping that I'll be able to say that's off my to-do list very soon too. Yes, I'm like, I okay, love Kimberly, what could you create in this world once we finally have, mm-hmm. I need to lose weight off of my off my to-do list. A lot of energy would be like mm-hmm. redirected to something else. Yes. And I, even if it's just mental space, because like I can't say that I'm out here like slacking or not being impactful or yeah. um, wasting my time. But th- ha- not to have that mental like mm-hmm. holding back of like, this is another thing I know I want to do. Mm-hmm. I can think about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, think gosh. about all the ideas and things that have yet to be birthed because in half of your brain, you're worried about what am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? I need to get to the gym. Who's on Instagram doing the latest thing? Yes. Right. The weight, the latest weight loss trick. So let's clear all of that out and give you some more space to create more things like this. There's clearly going to be an offline conversation, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> clearly going to be an offline conversation. But before we let you go, mm-hmm. tell the people where to find you. You can find me at jenniferdent.com. Okay. That's my home on the internet. Uh-huh. I have a podcast, Stop Dieting Forever. Mm-hmm. You can get on my mailing list. Every Monday, I send out tips, Her tricks. emails are good, y'all. I advice. get Advice. Yes, I'm in your head. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, and Instagram, Jennifer Dent Brown. Got it. Yeah. So with that, thank you so much. Thank you for having me in yes. your home and like having this conversation. Yes. I love it. Yes, we appreciate it. And with that, y'all, may your next move be your very best move. Talk soon. <laughs>